Medicaid. Now, when we talk about Medicaid, normally we confuse it with Medicare, but they're two entirely different programs. Medicare services the senior citizens of the country, and it's administered entirely by the federal government. Medicaid is primarily for low-income and disabled citizens, and it's a joint program paid for and administered by the feds and the states. It's the second largest program in our state budget, right behind K-12 education, and it is growing at an unsustainable rate. Under Obamacare, this will become the largest program in our all funds budget by 2014-15, surpassing education. It will be 46.5% of our total budget, one program. In the same time frame, it's going to go from 44 million people on it now to 8.6 million people in Texas on Medicaid. That's a 94.7% increase. But if Obamacare had never passed in that time frame, it still would have increased 18%. GR spending on the newly eligibles under, under Obamacare is at a 90-10 ratio. So that means the feds are paying 90% of the costs and we're paying 10% of the costs. This is not going to continue. They are not going to continue paying 90% of our costs when their budget is as red as it is. That's just the reality of the matter. It's going, so Texas needs to start preparing now for the likelihood that this program is not going to be nearly what they said it was going to be. To give you an idea of what this means as far as our general revenue, as far as our money, Medicaid is going to require $10 billion in additional revenue, GR revenue, by 2014-15 without Obamacare. $14 billion if Obamacare stands. That's GR. That's our money. That's not federal matching funds. If, if we were to do this by a sales tax increase alone, if we were to make no budget cuts for Medicaid alone, nowhere else in the budget, this would mean a four and a half cent increase, leaving us with the highest sales tax burden in the nation. That's with Obamacare. So even if Obamacare hadn't passed, we would need a three cent sales tax increase. Still the highest sales tax burden in the nation. So the reality is, Obamacare or no Obamacare, Medicaid is broken. And it is growing way faster than we can control. One of the big problems, though, is that it is increasingly controlled by the federal government. As John Caliandro mentioned, in Obamacare, they restrict much of our ability to control that program. So one of the things we did was Attorney General Greg Abbott took this up with 20-so-odd other states and went to a federal court and said, the provisions in Obamacare effectively take control of our program, and we no longer have control of it, and it's bankrupting us. And that goes against the original law the way it was intended. The judge was sympathetic. <laughs> but because we still have the ability to opt out, he said, and I quote, the states have little recourse but to remain the very junior partner in this partnership. So essentially he's saying, I hear you, but you're up a creek without a paddle. So we can make small changes. We've talked about Medicaid managed care. We can cut certain optional populations, but the reality is, is the fundamental structure of this system remains, and that structure is what's driving costs up. We can't do anything right now to substantially bend the cost curve down. So everyone says, okay, let's get out of it. Let's opt out of it. Well, Representative John Zerwas passed a bill last session that impelled, compelled the Health and Human Services Commission and the Texas Department of Insurance to study what exactly that would look like. And without getting into details, it pretty much put the lid on that conversation. We, we can't opt out. We don't have the money to provide those services. It would be a huge drain on our counties and on our private insurance citizens as hospitals transfer costs to them. So really only one option remains, and that's reform. But like we talked about, the federal government controls this program. So what do we need to reform it? Well, frankly, we need our freedom and our money back. So.
We've come up, we're coming up with different options on, on how to get those, and, and one of which is interstate compacts, which Mario will talk about in just a minute. But what, what we do in the healthcare center is say, okay, if we were to get our freedom and our money back, and that's a big if, but if we were, what would we do? How, how, how would we build a program that, that serves the, the truly needy citizens while at the same time bending the cost curve down? And so, so we've, kind of, we've been trying to tackle this issue over about the last nine months, and we have some principles that we're working on. One, it's got to utilize personal responsibility, expanded con consumer choice, and cost sharing as means for cost containment. It needs to empower the people on it in the private market, not ensnare them to government programs. And it needs to employ things like sliding scales and co-payments so they have skin in the game. Yeah so that they're making value-based decisions on their health care. In the end, the big conversation in health care comes down to one question. Who's going to make the decisions? On a governmental level, we're saying the states, not the feds, need to make the decisions. But on a state level, the individual, not the state, needs to make the decisions. Medicaid is not a distant liability that we can put off till another biennium. Like I talked about with those sales taxes, because we budget two years in advance, we need that additional GR next biennium because it'll be for the biennium after that, which means those sales tax increases need to be enacted this biennium if we want those. I'm not advocating that whatsoever, and that's not going to happen. But the reality is, is this problem is big and it's here now. We have to reform Medicaid. The discussion has to be started. We need our freedom. We need our money back. And that's what Mario Loyola is going to talk about.